Right, this is Tune ECU. In this video, I'm going to tell you what Tune ECU is, what you can do with it, why you may need it, why I have it, and what I think of it. I'm just going to point out at this point that I'm not a big tech person, so go easy on the computer tech type stuff questions if you have any. Tune ECU has its own forum and it has its own Facebook page, and there's also a help tab on the app itself. So. If you need to know anything or if you need to ask any questions, that's the best place to do it. Oh, and I'm not sponsored for this video by anybody either. Right, what is Tune ECU? In a nutshell, Tune ECU is an Android app which is used to communicate with the engine ECU on a motorbike. Only certain makes a motorbike though mainly Triumph and a few European bikes, which are these here. And depending on what bike you've got, the way the app communicates with the bike is done in a different way. So what you need to do is you need to actually get onto the forum or onto the Facebook page, or the most helpful one is actually the help tab on the app itself, which will tell you all the requirements and all the bikes that the app can support and what you need to make these bikes work. So having said that, the most important thing to take away at this stage is do your research before you get your credit card out and spend any money on hardware or anything like that. So Tune ECU is an Android app, which basically means you can only use it on an Android, like on an Android phone or a tablet. There is people using it on Windows, on laptops and stuff, but I don't think that's supported anymore. And I think these people are using emulators to emulate an Android. Like I said, I'm not a big tech person, so I haven't actually got into that yet. I might well do that further on down the track. But for now, this video is the start of my journey with Tune ECU. I'm making this video now right from the start because you find with a lot of videos, by the time people come to publish them, they've actually got fluent with what they're talking about and whatever they're using. And they tend to miss out the very things in the beginning what they made mistakes with or what people starting out would want to know. So what I'm doing now is I'm documenting my Tune ECU journey right from the start to help anyone else at their start. So the app itself, you do have to actually pay for it, but it's not a lot of money and if you're at a stage where you're doing things like messing around with your ECU on your bike anyway it's not a cost which is really going to affect you at all so my advice to anybody who wants to use Tune ECU is to go and look on the internet at the website itself and find out if your bike's applicable and what you can do with it and then I would actually download the app so you can actually use the help tab on the app which is the most helpful thing I've found and you can see how the app works and you can see if it's suitable for you or not as well. When you get the app, you can register up to five VIN numbers. I think that's a number. And if you need to use it on any more than that, you need to pay for a pro license. So why would you want to communicate, talk to your engine ECU? Well, if you put bigger exhaust on it, for example, or take the catalytic converter off, which is a common thing people do, you'll get the most benefit from the bike by adjusting the fuel in to suit and get the most power or performance you want out of it. And to do this, you need to actually get inside the ECU and adjust the parameters that control the fuel in for the bike. When bikes come out of the factory standard, they're actually set up for economy and to have emissions that suit the country, whatever they're in. And for people like us who like to play about with things and modify things and get more performance out of stuff, this isn't always the best thing. So we can actually get into the engine ECU and change the stuff and actually adjust it to make it better for our needs. I will say at this point as well, if you don't have an Android device and you need to get one, beware if you're going out and thinking of getting a really cheap device. Because some of the really cheap ones, the tablets or the phones, won't actually support what Tune ECU needs. Generally you'll find the phones or tablets with Android Go on them are the ones that don't work. But what I would suggest is getting on the website and actually having a look and seeing exactly what the system requirements are. 
This was the trap I fell into. I watched another YouTube video where someone just bought a cheap phone. So I went out and bought a cheap phone, and then I realised once I got it that it had Android Go on it, which wasn't really compatible very well with TuneECU. It does actually work, but I'm pretty sure some of the functions don't work that well on it. You can actually change the style of the dashboard as well. Maybe you can't on the phone. Oh, that's interesting, because I can't change the parameters on my phone, but I can on my tablet. Probably because this has got an Android Go on it. That's probably why this is not very good. And, of course, it's very difficult to see. I've got no maps selected at the moment, but to work with the maps, you've got all these segments here, which are going to be so difficult to actually adjust when you're using the phone. So, this is why I've got a tablet instead. But this is probably good for data logging while you're riding. If you don't already have an Android device as your regular phone or whatever and you need to get one, you don't have to actually get a SIM card for it if you're using it at home because you could just connect to your Wi-Fi and use your home internet if you need the internet. Which you probably will need at some point because you're going to have to download the app from TuneECU. It's not available on the Apple Store or anything like that. You have to get it directly off the website. My bike is a Triumph Bobber and to be able to connect the app, the Tune ECU app, with the bike, it needs to be able to talk to the ECU. And to do that, you talk to it through the OBD2 connector, which is a plug on the bike, which actually plugs into the electronics on the bike, and you can put computers and stuff like that into it. An OBD plug is a universal plug for modern cars and vehicles nowadays across the world. In order to talk to the ECU on my bike, which is a Triumph Bobber, I need to do that via Bluetooth. So I needed to get a Bluetooth adapter. And the one I got was an OBD Link MX Plus, which is what works great for my bike. And it's just a little unit like that. That's your OBD2 plug there, which connects into it. And you can talk to your Android device through Bluetooth. I'll probably put a link to where you can get one of these in the description below. This little guy actually also came with an app of its own which you can bring up various things on. You can read various sensors on the engine, you can get up a rev counter, engine coolant and things like that. And also I've used this since I've had it for a couple of times to diagnose faults on cars. So it's a pretty universal little device and I'm really pleased with it and they're not too much money. But some bikes you'll find will need a lead which actually plugs into the bike directly from your Android device. And there's a list of all this stuff you need on the forum and on the help tab and on the website. Right, so this here is where the OBD2 plug is on the Triumph Bobber. It's just tucked under here flopping around, look. For most bikes it's going to be under the seat. So then I just plug my OBD2 connector into it. This is my Bluetooth interface. And that little blue light flash saying it wants to pair. I'll turn the ignition on. And I will say that it's a good idea to have a battery charger on when you're doing all this as well. I've got my battery charger rigged up there, look. That's so that when you're actually flashing the ECU, you don't have the engine running. It's so that the battery doesn't go flat. Because if you're flashing the ECU and the battery goes flat, you're going to have a half flashed ECU with half the date on and it's not going to work. The reason I have tuned ECU is because I've got to a point now where my next projects are going to be getting a lot more power out of the bike and the modifications I'm going to do are going to require that I remap the engine map because it's going to need more fueling because I'm probably going to have bigger injectors and stuff and things like that. I'm not a complete novice with this sort of thing because I was a diagnostic technician for Volkswagen for more than 25 years. But when you work for a main dealer, the brand, they really hold you back from information and being able to get into the ECUs and f*** with too much. So remapping an ECU is a new thing for me. But I do understand all of the sensors and the outputs and the inputs that go into it. But the mapping part is something I haven't done before. So I'm excited now to actually get involved and f*** with the other thing my job did for me was 
it killed my passion for cars and bikes. I'd work on cars all day long. The last thing I wanted to do when I got home was fiddle with them again. But now out of the motor trade, I've actually found my passion for cars and bikes again. I mentioned mapping and the Tune ECU app is an interface so that you can communicate with the engine ECU to remap it. So what is remapping? A map is the information that the engine ECU needs to supply the correct fueling and timing and stuff to the engine to make it run right. I believe it's called a map because if you was to draw a 3D picture of the parameters, you'd get a picture of a 3D map. For instance, if you had the information of the engine speed and the throttle position, this would just be charted out on a two-dimensional graph. But if you add in engine load to that, you can actually draw a 3D map. I'm pretty sure that's why it's called an engine map. And with Tune ECU, we can actually alter this engine map. We can change the parameters that make the map up. And then we can load it onto the engine ECU and the bike will have all these different parameters loaded into it. There are standalone ECUs you can get to replace the factory ECU. And with these, you can actually make adjustments while the engine's running or while it's on the dyno. So you can actually do live adjustments. But with Tune ECU and communicating with the factory ECU, you can't do this. You need to do it all on the map and then load the map onto the bike. This is called flashing. Standalone ECUs are great because you can adjust stuff live and you can actually add different components into the engine as well. The only trouble with them is you may have trouble getting them to communicate with things like the ABS control unit or the dash. But if you're actually reflashing the standard ECU, you don't have that problem. And also, I'm not here to chuck money at things, so being able to remap the standard ECU is right up my street. At the moment, I have a DNK Tuneworks map on the bike, and I can't actually find my original file. So it would be really good to actually read it off of the ECU and save it so I don't lose that. But the only trouble is with the Triumph Bobber, because you communicate with the ECU through Bluetooth, you can't actually read the map which is on there. So what I'll be doing is I'll be downloading the standard Triumph map, which you can get off of the Tune ECU website. You can get lots of supported maps off of there. And I'll download that onto the bike. And then I'm gonna actually tune the bike up myself to the point of where the DNK Tuneworks was making the bike work. So that's my aim for now. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm learning Tune ECU so that when I come to do the modifications on my bike, I know what I'm doing when it comes to setting the ECU up to suit it. So let's have a look at Tune ECU. So basically you open your app hit ECU, hit connect and that should connect to your bike. Once you've, I've already set this up once so it should work pretty quick and it's saying it's connected there. So this is the main screen you've got. You've got your dashboard which has got your throttle position sensor, your engine temp, manifold pressure sensor, your rev counter and over here you've got the load on each cylinder and your throttle position sensor. You can use this page here for balancing between the two throttle bodies on the Triumph. Also as you can see the headlight or the LED light are on. These will drain the battery a little bit so it is advisable when you're actually flashing the ECU to take the fuse out for the light for the headlight so it doesn't drain the battery. Right so this is my tablet I bought a Samsung notebook which works pretty good with this so so I open the app, I'll open the app, I I'll open the app, I told you I'm not a good tech person, and you come up with this main screen, so what we need to do now is we need to connect to the bike, so if I hit ECU and connect, it should connect to the OBD2 connector, which it has done, I've already, no it's not responding, turn ignition off and on, right there's my little connector there, Right, I'm now connected to the Bluetooth on the bike. No, it's not responding. F this. 
it's already been connected once, so hopefully this should be easy to connect rather than having to go through all the palaver of connecting Bluetooth. So if I hit connect, connecting, connected, we're in. Right, so now this should be reading what's going on on the engine, which is right, it says it's in gear naught, 58 degrees. Let's start it up. As you can see we've got RPM, we've got throttle position sensor, manifold pressure. If I swipe to the other screen, like that, that's your two cylinders, the load on the two cylinders. So you can actually balance out the throttle bodies through that. If I swipe this way, we can actually get readings of all the different sensors off of the engine. So if I just hit sensors there and list, I can pick other things, so throttle position sensor, the oxygen sensors, manifold pressure, I can actually read them. If I hit OK, it'll bring up a list of them and you can read them live. There's also a data logger on here as well, somewhere. I'm not exactly sure how to use that yet, that'll probably be a later video. But you can actually read all these details live. And if you swipe this way, these are your tables. And it'll actually show you whereabouts on the table the engine's operating. So if I bring my, my throttle open a bit, the throttle position to move. So these, this is how you know whereabouts to modify your fuel and everything. But this is not a video about this. This is just a video about East Tune ECU itself. But these are the tables, this is where you go in to modify stuff. So if I hit map, no, if I hit table and hit modify, which I can't because I'm still connected to the bike. So if I just hit ECU and disconnect, and if I hit table and modify, I can select different cells and you can modify them by going up and down like that. And then that little green tick will save it, but we're not going to do that, we'll cancel it. So once you've saved it and you've got your map everywhere you want, that's when you actually download it onto the bike. So I hope all this makes sense, but this is not really a video about how to do all this stuff. This is just showing you what Tune ECU is at the moment. And it's a very handy tool. But you can also change the style of these gauges, look. If I can hit that little bit there and go parameters, go themes, then I can choose a different theme. Like that, see? Which is pretty cool. And also in parameters, if I go to units, you can change between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And somewhere in here, there is Might be on a different screen actually. We go there and go. Yeah, if we go into them. Parameters of the map. We can do this. We can actually change the rev limiter. We can take it up to 7.4 or we can drop it down. I'm not sure if you can go above 7.4 somehow so you can map it to rev higher or if you can turn it off. Not sure yet. You can also change when the thermo fan cuts in as well. So it's a pretty handy device. Right, so that's Tune ECU. I'll say at this point, if you actually do buy a map from somebody like DNK Tuneworks, for example, it is worth the money, because these people have spent a lot of time producing this map, because you can see how time consuming this is. So what's next? I'm gonna continue documenting my journey with Tune ECU. I'm also doing uh, electronic fuel injection and mapping course. I might do a review of that and let you know how I'm getting on with that. I'm just brushing up on my skills because last time I was into drag racing I was just using big carburetors and now I'm really looking forward to getting involved in engine mapping and developing the bike, doing some more drag racing and making content about all the performance mods I'm about to do on it. So stay tuned for all that. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment 
and all that good stuff. Have a great day.